Good morning and welcome to Fex Top, guys. So when you get here, just dump your stuff. Um, everyone's got their own way of doing Fex, but I'm just going to run through how I do mine. Cool, so first off, I like to kind of walk in, have a quick overview of the ramp, make sure it's not completely cactus. Um, then I'll go in, grab the nets. The red one that you see now is actually for uh, the snowmobiles, so I'll explain how that goes out later. Um, and then we've got the two blue nets, so the yellow and blue ones. Um, one for each side, and the shorter one goes on the right side, longer one on the left. So once you got these two nets set up, guys, um, the shorter one goes on that side and flares out. And then same with this one, we flare it out. And you just want to keep a bit of room there for ski school to do their thing. If, say, you wanted to chuck the chairs on in the morning, guys, you're going to use the opposite lever, so the green one, flick that down, flick it, and that'll actually drop this green bar down, and then you'll be able to chuck the chairs on. Um, you're going to want to go in time with the timing mark, which you'll get from the bottom. Um, and then, yeah, once you got all the chairs on, just make sure your tail stops in place. And then chucking up this rope line as well, which is this one here. While you're still up Fex Top, guys, it's a good idea to uh, check in with the lifty, see that they've been trained. Um, if not, obviously give a train, explain the slow rope, um, explain kind of like families and whatnot and getting people to unload at the uh, blue line, um, as well as explaining the anti-collision system. So when you get to Mousetrap Top, we're going to run into the hut and grab the net. Uh, and then we just roll the net out and drill it in. The idea of the net here is to stop people from uh, kind of skiing slash falling into the hole that's usually around the wind fence there. Once we've set this net up, we'll head down to Mousetrap Bottom. With the nets down here, there's three that'll get set up and that's just to stop beginners from shooting off this edge here. Um, when you have an overlap, leave a bit of a gap in them. So the net in front should kind of like overlap the one behind. Then that way people can still ride behind them um, but if they were to go straight, it should catch them still. So yeah, that'll swing around like that. And then there's this little two panel net here, which kind of protects the lifty and stops people from skiing into the queue. Damn, look at that for a ramp. So here we are at the snowmobile net. This is the red and yellow net. Um, it's a little bit shorter in height. And the idea behind this net is to separate um, the snowmobiles from the skiers as well as to stop skiers slash snowboarders um, kind of like riding from top of lakeside down and falling off the edge. Uh, when putting in this net guys or any net wear gloves. Um, a lot of them are starting to splinter, they're getting a little old, even the newer nets can do it and they'll actually give you a pretty nasty fiberglass splinter. Um, if you do get one of these splinters I've heard that soaking your hands in warm water can help to remove it. Alright guys so when you get here in the morning Go and check your tail stop, make sure it's at the correct height. I'll actually bring that up in a sec. Uh, you want to make sure that your bonk's out. You got your sign, so the open here is now on the tower, which is cool. Uh, you've also got an unload here that needs to go out. The gantry arm should be out. If they had to fix the ramp, it might not be, so just swing that out. Um, and then, yeah, just checking on the ramp. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't left overly well, so Ben and I have been fixing that up. Um, and we've also got Pat on the line at the moment, so we'll keep an ear out for, that, for him and give him a slow when he needs it. Alright, so up at Drover's Top, we've got this new net that we've been using. Um, so usually just a two panel, maybe bigger. The idea is to kind of stop the park guys cutting straight across the ramp. Um, although it hasn't been as much of an issue now that they've moved the park to the other side of Panorama and not on this close side. Um, so yeah, just chuck the net out, your tail stop, that could actually be moved around a bit more. Uh, I found this year that it gives people a bit more room on the ramp. Um, you don't have to go straight, kind of, you know, 180 with the ramp, or sorry, 90 degrees with the ramp. Um, yeah, bring it around a bit more, um, and it just gives people a bit more room. Other thing to check here, guys, is that this pad's on correctly. Um, so that just, you know, is to stop people from hitting it as well as your safety gate signs out. I'll go fix that in a sec, just cause there's a bit of snow covering it. Um, there's also a open and unload here sign too that needs to be out. One thing to note with drovers, um, when you're doing your training, just explain the tail stop bypass. So that's actually this button here. Um, if the tail stop comes out, you won't be able to get a reset unless you're uh, holding this tail stop bypass 
hit the reset and then you'll be able to get a start from there. So just make sure you explain that to the lifties. Um, when you're doing your rounds in the mornings, have a look, make sure your book's authorized, you know, everything's been signed off, like the Q-Race is set up and whatnot. When you're doing the zone leader check, don't sign that unless everyone's names are in here um, and everything's been signed off. So the main ones that get, a, that get missed are probably top and bottom enclosures checked um, and Q-Race set up. If you know it's done, just sign it off, that's fine. All right, so we've just arrived to Towers Bottom. Um, we're here with Jackie Ray, he's going to give us a bit of a run through. Nice. So we got down here, what are we going to look for? First thing that we're going to look for is our enclosures set up correctly and that's our catch mat and signs are out. Yep. Secondly, we would be looking at our ramp. Yeah. Um, maintaining a ramp, making sure it's ready, so we can go operational. Mm -hmm. And then going forward, we're going to look at setting up our Q race. Down at Towers, you've got one, two, three, four ropes and two nets. All our ropes are numbered with electrical tape from one to four. Um, start with your first two ropes that connect to your gates and then work your way out. Um, we want to try and make sure our ropes end up nice and even, tight, so we can direct guests into a safe spot to load our lifts. Yep. Um, once our ropes and nets are all in, you've got your enclosure kind of net here and then the one for the sleds on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go to setting up our other sign, Pete's sign, two bins, the seat and any advertisements. And that's probably what we'll try and look at doing last once we know that we've got the lift safely. Yep, yep. Ready to operate. And uh, yeah, the big one for us as zone leaders, guys, is when you get down here as well, you want to check your training sheet, make sure that people are trained and you know, they're happy and able to competently uh, run the lift. Um, Towers Bottom is one of those, Jack will know, you know, it's a pretty hectic lift station at the best of time. So you know, if you need to offer additional support, do, but also remember that you've got a zone to run to. So you know, sometimes it means just giving a quick hand and then moving on, but yeah, where you can guys, just make sure everyone's trained at all times. It's a massive one. Train, train, train. Lovely. <laughs> all right guys, so when you get here in the morning, just make sure that your close here signs out, as well as the catch mat. Um, the enclosure is correctly set up. So with the enclosure, you just got the one green post there, one over there, and then there's two on the corner. Uh, there's also a net that gets set up, and then there's a net at the back that gets set up too. Um, just make sure that you've trained the lifties, they know what they're doing, the ramp's looking good, um, and that the Q-Race is set up properly. So with the Q-Race, there's just the one, one rope here in front, another one, a singles, and then a back rope. And then this one here is actually um, ski school and authorised entry. Another thing to check if you've got time while you're down here, guys, just have a quick look at the bins. Um, and yeah, also write a bit of a training observation if you can while you're here. All right guys, so here we are at Fex Bottom. Um, the Q-Race just kind of shoots out. You got a little um, ski school entry just here. There's also a singles line that goes in as well. There's a couple of benches, just make sure they're out. Um, Mark set this up with all the advertising banners and the flags. Actually looks really nice, so maybe something to take note of. Um, when you get down here, just check the bins, make sure they're not overflowing, make sure your peat sign's out, um, as well as the catch mat. There's also a open here and unload here sign as well, so make sure that's all out. Um, another thing to take note of too, guys, is your enclosure again. Um, it's all good at the moment, so we don't have to touch it. Um, when you're doing a training down here, you can explain the white teeth to people um, and explain how they can break. Um, and if they start seeing stress fractures in them, that they can call that in early. Um, you can also run through the, uh, the um, anti-collision system. So just explain that if they were to override that anti-collision, they need to be looking outside and making sure that they know what's going on with the chair and that all the chairs are moving. If for whatever reason, you know, the chairs aren't moving, you need to explain to them that they need to stop the chair immediately and then call the uh, mountain office and we'll get maintenance down to fix the issue.
So if you want to take the chairs off at the end of the day, guys, make sure you park the chair so that it's outside of this red rail section here. Um, park it, then you're going to grab this yellow pole, which is this one here. And then you're going to flick open the gate, swing it open, and then we're going to drop this, drop this red lever here. So you just swing that out, pull the lever, and then it'll drop down. And then you can start pushing your chairs off. Uh, good speeds, probably maybe around 2.4, but it really depends on how many people you got. Another thing to note, if you're putting chairs on in the morning, once they start coming back into the station, you'll have to hit this chair approach rail button and that'll bypass the safety. Uh, another thing to note guys, lightning rods just here. I just go straight onto the cable there. You wanna close the doors at the end of the day, obviously make sure the lift is off. There's a dummy plug just here. There's a bit of rope behind there. Pull it up, swing the door closed. Uh, and then there's also the zombie bar that goes over too. Also, if you're doing storm flaps at the end of the day, obviously make sure the chair's stopped. Uh, and then you're gonna unplug this dummy plug here, pull the bolt out, this whole assembly here, uh, this rod will slide out, and then you'll be able to drop the, uh, drop the storm flap down. When you do it, try not to slam it down into this hole here, because what will happen is all the rubbers will kind of push through and it won't really, um, won't keep the snow out as well as it should. So everyone's got their own way of doing it, but I like to chuck my foot there and then just kind of catch it. Once you've got it down, just chuck the bar back through um, and put the pin back in.